This is the Power Break Podcast number 225, titled, Give Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. What's going on with you, dude? Well, I thought we'd begin today with a uh, mention of how thankful we are. You know, something we're talk I, th- about. I think that's a great idea, and I think it's going to be <laughs> targeted at our listeners, perhaps. Yeah, we want to thank everybody for listening to the Power Break podcast. I'm thankful to be able to do this podcast every week with my good buddy, JT, also known as John Trebino, by the way. For those of you that don't know, he is a real person, not just a, a couple of initials. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, that, that is definitely true. I'm not just a figment of Bob's imagination. <laughs> and he's quite the the expert carpenter and uh, uh, handyman around that. the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm just impressed with this now. Anyway, we're I'm... I'm thankful that we were able to do this podcast going on five years pretty soon. And uh, crazy, how do you like that, JT? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's honestly really hard to believe, but it's. But good. I think it'd be. Yeah. I think it'd be appropriate as we give thanks. Give thanks to our listeners for listening to the podcast. Also, thank you for telling others about the podcast. And as we always mention, thank you for leaving us a rating and or a review. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, especially five years. Um, you know, when I when I sit down and I think about over five years, how many people have listened and how many times those people have downloaded, and it's just um, it's just really humbling, Bob. It's it's really cool, and we appreciate you know whatever feedback we can get from you guys. Um, you can always send us a line at jt at bobrubaker dot com, um, or you know just get on there and give us a five star review or or give us some feedback there. We we read all of it, so we really appreciate it. All right, JT, we're talking about give thanks today. So um, what do you think of when it's here, that, that title? Well, it, you know, the, the first thing I think about is how important being grateful is. Um, and gratitude is um, really the thing that defines uh, really the course of your life. Uh, at least for me, it has. Um, when I'm grateful, uh, when I'm thankful, uh, then things around me don't bother me as much when things don't go my way. I don't get upset about it. There's, um, it's like a setting of your mind. So thankfulness for me, um, is really important. If, if I can get up and I can be thankful for what I have in my life, then it produces gratitude. And that gratitude really does change the course of your life. So, um, that's what really comes to mind for me. How about you, buddy? Well, gratitude, of course, uh, trying to promote that over the years in my ministry, and it's just a part of my life, and I hear more and more about gratitude all the time. We'd have to admit, though, that as I think about this, that people are just really ungrateful today, or would you call it ingrateful? I guess you're an ingrate, but you're ungrateful. <laughs> that's anyway, right. That's right. There, that's right. There are exceptions, but in general, the entitlement society seems to be living on this ever disappointment, and consequently, they rarely express gratitude and instead express dismay with you. Anyway, yeah. um, Second Timothy chapter 3, it says that people um, in the last days will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant. Abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eighteen, then this is a command. I mean it's one of those commands. You don't think about it, but it's it's written in the imperative. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So Wow. Yeah. Today, today we are talking about the need to give thanks. Yeah, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to BobRibaker.com, get over there, sign up for the blog at the very least, but also check out the other resources. I think there's some great stuff over there that can really help you. Also check out the books. Um, We all know what my favorite is, The Battle for the Mind, and part of that book talks about gratitude and being thankful and how powerful that is. So uh, I, I think that all just amazingly ties together. But let's continue to talk more about your blog, Give Thanks. 
As I wrote in the blog, it's the season to give thanks. Here we are in Thanksgiving week as this is published this week. But you're, uh, of course, the question is, are you a grateful person or do you just pull it out at one time of the year? Uh, do you, it's interesting, isn't it interesting, JT, that we've gone from Thanksgiving to Turkey Day? Yeah, you, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I don't know when it became almost cool to be you know, a little negative and a little rough around the edges. And, um, you know, the words that we always traditionally thought about as being positive almost became uncool. And I think, think Thanksgiving is one of those words. So yeah, now it's, now it's Turkey day because really we lost the meaning of it. It's just really about now. Let's see how much we can shove in our face and sit down and watch some football. <laughs> yeah, and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, the, the question is then on this subject, on this time of the year when we're giving thanks, or should be, um, actually we should do that all the time. The question is, do you live on ready to express gratitude? Uh, what makes a person come across as ungrateful, and what does that indicate? Well, a couple of answers here. Gratitude for a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ is not an option when you consider what all has been done for your salvation and what is happening on your behalf every moment of every day and what God has in store for you in His glorious plan in the future. No wonder the call to come before God is to come before Him with thanksgiving. Here are some familiar words. You probably have sung this, JT. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his people. We are his uh, we, and we are his and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with gladness. thanksgiving mm. and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. As I wrote there, let's face it, too many times our focus goes on what is wrong in life and what is missing from the plans that we have for right now. And as a result, we miss out on recognizing how gracious God is to us day after day, moment after moment, even in giving us life and breath and all of our daily needs, which says nothing about our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that, we're reminded that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. We've not received the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but received the spirit of adoption, whereby we even cry to God, Abba, Father. No eye has seen, it says, and no ear heard, nor the heart of man has imagined what God has prepared for those who so are looking at a glorious future. And he reminds us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 that he that did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how would he not also with him graciously give us all things? I think we're in pretty good shape when we think about the blessings that come from God. What do you think, JT? No, you're absolutely right. You know, and I was thinking as you were talking how um, a lot of times I'll sit down and I'll talk, talk to my boys and I know that they're not able to focus for very long. And I started to think about, okay, well, can I focus very long when other persons are talking to me? Um, and, you know, it has, there's a pattern there, and it has to do, I think, with hearing gratitude or hearing bitterness or negativity. Most of the time, when I talk to somebody, they're throwing out negativity. But the funny part oh, is, yeah. is, is they don't want to hear it. So I think that's why we don't want to talk to each other half the time. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like if somebody throws negativity at me, the first thing I do, and maybe it's because I have two kids and they're negative too much, I just I I stop even listening tune to them out. it. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like I don't them. even know what's going on with that person. So, but if somebody comes up and says, "Hey, man, that was awesome," that's a totally different thing. And you're engaged because mm -hmm. you want to hear what they're talking about. Um, yeah. So I think part of, because we're so negative in society, part of our the reasons why we don't listen to each other very well anymore is because we're just sick of hearing the negativity. So maybe uh, expressing gratitude actually catch people off guard and they would actually want to hear. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Like you walk in and uh, imagine if... if, if I don't know, two people walked into a political debate and they were like, hey, I just wanted to tell you, man, I really appreciate you and how much work you've put into this campaign. And I want this to be 
basically just something to where people get to know you and get to know me, and then they can decide who to vote hmm. for. How incredibly refreshing would that be? Instead yeah, of, oh, well, sure. that guy's, you know, he's been taking money on the side for years. You know, everybody's just slinging the turd at each other, and there's really <laughs> no positivity. So why would we pay attention? Why would we trust that person? Why would we care to hear it? So I think, you know, it just was convicting as I was listening to you. I was like, man, maybe that's why, like, if somebody comes up and starts being negative, I just, I just completely tune them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, if we're not careful, it'll, it'll turn God off, too. I mean, well, actually, well, he cares man, about us. But worse, yeah. Just like the children of Israel, that God, uh, by the leadership of Moses, led out of Egypt, providing for them, protecting them along the way. And what did they do? They murmured and complained to, the, to their detriment. But even in those times of chastisement, God was merciful as he is with us. It says in the book of Numbers that the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outlying parts of the camp. And the people cried to Moses and Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire died out. Maybe we just need to, need to think the, about stirring things up here on this Thanksgiving to find it, uh, you know, maybe if we find it hard to look beyond any disappointments that are causing us to murmur and complain, we should consider the words of Jeremiah as he lamented over the destruction and the devastation left behind as his people were carried into captivity into Babylon. Notice in his lament, his openness in his complaint, but his refocus is on the Lord, which enables him to express his hope and gratitude. Here it is from Lamentations chapter 3. He says, begins, well, this is actually in the midst of his complaint. He says that he, God, has filled me with bitterness. He has uh, sated me with wormwood. He has made me, my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in the ashes. My soul is bereft of peace, and I have forgotten what happiness is. So I may say my endurance has perished, and so my hope from the Lord. Now, sounds like he's in a very bad way. Sure does. But yeah. again, a lament includes, of course, addressing God respectfully, and then it is an open and honest complaint followed by an open and honest request, and then, of course, expresses expressions of uh, trusting in God. But here he goes from complaint to verse 19 of chapter 3 of Lamentations. He says, Remember my afflictions and my wonderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. But this I recall to mine, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Wow. Yep. Now, that is a reason to be thankful. Tis the season to be thankful, as I wrote in the article. Actually, every day is because every moment is another reason to give thanks to God because his mercies are new every morning, and he is a faithful God. Check out the article. It's called Give Thanks. It's at BobBrewBaker.com. So what else is happening, Bob? Anything you want the listeners to know about this week? I thought it would be appropriate if we talked about the power of gratitude. <laughs> that seems to be appropriate. We're talking about giving thanks or gratitude. Yeah. And I wrote a book about that, the benefits thereof, and the power that you find in expressing gratitude. It's all there at the BobBrewBaker.com. Just click on the resources, go to the books, and from the books you'll find it. It's a red cover. It's called The Power of Gratitude. And while you're at BobBrewBaker.com, check out the sermon links to the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater. As we head into the Advent season, I'm doing a series and from the look of the car incarnation uh, from various promises and various uh, really beautiful texts in the book of Isaiah. It's all at BobBrewBaker.com. Check out the sermon links, the, the books, and the other resources at BobBrewBaker.com. Man, so good. Sorry about the uh, the dog barking in the background, but apparently I am in I am in danger, Bob, and the dog has to tell me. I'm sure it's something really dangerous, like a squirrel or something. But anyway, um, in case you forgot, Folks, this, is just, this isn't quite live, but it's next thing to it. We just recorded, and let it go. So, man, that if dog. Jay, what, what, what's the name of your dog? That would be Vinny. That would be the one who. Barks oh, and everything. Hey, Vinny. Yeah. Hey, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's named after my cousin Vinny because he's scrappy and small, just like him. Anyway, um, you don't. You probably don't even know that movie, My Cousin Vinny. It's a really funny no, movie, actually. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, 
Um, well, in case you forgot, this is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT, along with Bob Brubaker. This is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobbrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering it on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Or who knows, maybe Vinny will answer it. Um, hey, anyway. Vinny. Hey, Vinny. <laughs> hey, so question number one is from the spiritual side of life. So how do we avoid the tendency to be ungrateful and find the power of gratitude because we do have a tendency as a culture, as a people, as a world to look at things as glass half empty, don't we? No, we do. And really, it takes an attitude of humility to keep in mind that we're undeserving of the least of the Lord's mercy. So no matter what we have, we're getting better than we really deserve. So um, that's that's a very important thing. It's interesting, JT, this past week, as we record this, it was a couple of weeks ago, but anyway, I preached on the demonstration of humility that is found in prayer. In other words, if we pray, this is an act of humility. When we don't pray, it's an act of pride. Yep. So keeping that in mind, even as we pray, our expressions can also show. There was two that went up to the temple to pray. Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 18, there was a Pharisee and the tax collector, and the Pharisee prayed thus with himself. He said, I thank you, Lord. I'm not like other men, like this guy right here. <laughs> like this guy right here. The publican, uh, the man yeah. that I looked out on. Yes. Yes. And then he, he, the publican smote his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So uh, it, was, it was Jacob who prayed that as he looked to God, said, I'm not worthy of the least of all the deeds of the steadfast love of the Lord and his faithfulness that you have shown to your servant for all <laughs> my staff. And I've crossed this Jordan and now I've become two camps. So he began his prayer by expressing his uh, very fact that he's unworthy of the least of his, the Lord's mercies. In Isaiah chapter 57, he says, thus says the one who is high and lifted up, one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit. I think that uh, Vinny is going nuts here. Yeah, I think he's about to find himself outside again, um, which is unfortunate <laughs> oh, okay. because it's super cold. But um, Is anyway. it really? Well, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's cold for Florida. It's not cold for here. I think it's like 42, 43, something like that. Anyway. That would be cold. Uh, anyway, yeah, so but, uh, the first thing is to keep in mind that it, we need to be humble before God. The second is to review our riches that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3, he says, To me, who, though I'm the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And then just looking at, again, those verses, just to re, re, remind ourselves of how the scriptures teach us about the blessings we have from the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as he says in Romans chapter 11, oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, how inscrutable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. So as an ambassador for gratitude, we need to, to watch what we say, watch what we think, and seek to be a person who spreads the wealth, gratitude to God. What say you, JT? Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's super important, like I said, as far as how you want to set your day up. If you wake up and, you know, um, right now I have, I have, one son who's going into his teenage years, and I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know how any of us lived through that because we're just, he's just so negative and exasperated and everything's, you know, not his fault or what. And I'm like, oh my gosh, man, where are you getting this? Is this your friends? Because it doesn't happen here. But when you wake up and he's in that foul mood and you got to deal with it, you know, it, you have a tendency to fall into it. And then yeah. all of a sudden I turn around and I'm like, man, why am I so negative today? And then I'll be like, ah, oh, that's why I'm not showing any gratitude because the first thing I did when I got up was I heard negativity and I fell into that trap. So it's so, that's exactly right. it's so easy to do. Um, and that's why, you know, question number two is so important from the mental aspect. So 
How do we mentally get into a mindset of gratitude without letting those teenagers or whoever it is negatively <laughs> affect us? Uh, I, I put down in my notes here that to answer this question would say it's the it's the principle of the carrot and stick. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. Let's talk about the carrot first of all. The benefits of gratitude versus the problems with ingratitude. So first of all. The benefits of gratitude, first of all, it opens up the doors for new opportunities and improved relationships. Um, people like to be around a person that is positive, not just positive, saying, I'm going to be positive. Uh, I mean, you could be positively negative. You know, I know this is not going to happen. We'll be <laughs> positively positive. Negative. Well, then I'm sure it's not going to happen. Okay. okay, positivity or, or really of gratitude really opens the doors for new opportunities and improved relationships because people enjoy being around a person that is a grateful person. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely true. Secondly, gr- gratitude aids your health. We're talking physical health here. It's been proven that it helps your heart, your gut, helps you to overcome stress and a multitude of other things. So just stop and think about it. Just waking up in the morning and being grateful, listing those things. Some people have a gratitude journal, which is really good. And then you can review what you've written before. But being grateful helps you physically. So it helps you with relationships. It helps with new opportunities and helps you physical health. Third, it improves your psychological and mental strength of overcoming frustration, anger, and even jealousy and resentment just by expressing gratitude. And then the fourth thing, it it enhances your empathy and reduces aggression. So I know you want to be aggressive in life, well, <laughs> those are not 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 specific kind of aggression. Um, no, no, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, but it, but when you're around the negativity and all, it just kind of makes you feel kind of an aggressive mood. So stop and think about it. it. You want to enhance your empathy and reduce aggression, so it it hel- helps to be grateful. And fifth, the gratitude helps you sleep better. Wow, look at that. So just by filling out a gratitude journal or by Listing things for which your gratitude when you first get up helps you have a great day. And doing that before you go to bed at night helps you sleep better. Man, that's so good, man. Uh, the gratitude journal is huge. I, um, you know, I go through phases with the boys. Uh, right now we do um, Bible study on the way to school. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of times that will run into uh, all the way up to the time I got to drop the first one off. Um, but if we have time, we still do the name three things that we're, that you're grateful for. Um, the trick is not getting stuck in a rut to where that becomes a routine and you're not really thinking about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause some people listen, if you talk to people three days in a row, sometimes they list the same three things, you know, well, that's and, exactly and what re- will really any thought to it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's really important for that um, to make sure that you're really thinking about it, that you're really focusing on it and you're giving it attention. You know, um, I don't think that a lot of people realize that there's effort involved with both things. So if you choose to be grateful, there's got to be effort involved with that. You're making a conscious decision and you're putting mm-hmm. effort towards that. But also, if you're going to be negative, that there's effort involved in that too. And I don't think we really realize that we're putting effort into that as well. So we're really kind of making our own bed, you know? That's right. It, it actually is negative energy that's going out at that time. So it's, it's kind of defeating. Um, well, on, one other thing I said, the carrot and the stick, those were the carrots, the benefits of gratitude and, and the problems with ingratitude, or you might say the stick here with the very fact that God has commanded us to be grateful. Yeah, And as we look at the Old Testament, he showed dismay and even chastisement to his people for being ungrateful. So look at it again. This is kind of a stick, but it's really an an encouragement and instruction. When it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances. for This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So mentally, let's get our minds together. We need to be grateful. Physically, spiritually, psychologically, uh, it helps us. It helps us even to sleep better. So why wouldn't we do it? And that's because we get stuck in the rut and stuck on ourselves. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I will tell you as a police officer, it was the rule almost 
that people became negative relatively quick because you're dealing with problems. You're dealing with trying to solve them. A lot of times the people that you're dealing with don't want to be talking to you, so they treat you horribly. It's very easy to become negative. And then what I noticed happened, at least where I worked, um, was that got brought into the station to where Mm. we became adversarial to each other. So one of the biggest things that had to happen for me to get more gratitude back was I had to stay away from that environment. You know, I had to consciously go in, do my job, and then go home and leave that environment there and have nothing to do with it. And you have to seek out other people that are also grateful. Because if you don't, man, everybody, you know, everybody wants to be on the same sinking ship. Um, You know, so likes kind of, they stick together. Um, I was trying to think of what my grandmother used to say. She used to say, you know, uh, oh, just basically something as simple as misery loves company, right? Um, right. And I was thinking also that from the positive side, that's one reason people should be part of a local body of believers as a church, because yeah, that's, that's what the sure. church should be. We focus on what God has done and we come before his presence in gratitude and it's that's hopefully gives you a supercharge as you meet together with God's people on the weekend. Yeah, for sure. The Lord's day. Yeah. It's so important to be a part of a church. Um, so, all right, let's go into question number three. Uh, and we're going to turn to the physical side of life as always. So, uh, man, sleep or work out. That is the question. You got a choice. <laughs> Which one are you going to do, Bob? All right, so say you're lying in bed and deciding, trying to decide what time to set your alarm for the workout the next day, and, and you could get a full seven hours of sleep if you wake up at the normal time, or you're tired and you could wake up an hour and a half earlier and get the morning workout in, which, and, you know, or do you sleep in a little bit farther? Which do you choose? Well, I, I came across some research. The seemingly simple thing to say here is that uh, sleep is essential. As um, and central for your healthy immune system and injury prevention, but exercise can also contribute to a better and sounder sleep. Hmm. Okay. So sleep hmm. and exercise are both incredibly important for your body, but if you have to choose one, one expert says choose sleep. A matter of fact, because adequate amounts of sleep gets your body the time it needs to replenish and refresh your cellular functioning. Right. And but if you don't want to do that, your health can greatly suffer greatly. I mean can suffer greatly. So most experts agree that when forced to choose, they'd almost always choose sleep because we need like seven to nine hours of sleep. How much how many hours of sleep do you get? It depends. It depends on whether I get distracted. And what I mean by that is um, you know, if I'm up um, cause sometimes the only time I really have to hang out like, and just think of nothing, sometimes it's after the boys go to sleep. So yeah. sometimes I'll get, I'll get caught up watching something or something and I'll stay up too late. But in general, I get between, between seven and seven and a half to eight hours. Like I, I really have tried to make that a focus, um, because I've read enough of what you're basically talking about to know that um, sleep is humongous. Um, and and when they look at the development of disease processes, when they look at overall health, when they look at stress and the development of cortisol and all these things that are negative for our body, almost all of it can be traced back to bad sleep patterns or, mm-hmm. or, or stress or not exercising. So... Man, you got to focus on that. I mean, how many hours do you get? Because I know as you've gotten older, it's harder to sleep, isn't it? It really is, especially when my internal alarm clock goes off at 4 a.m., no matter what time I go to bed. And, uh, you know, that's one reason I have the whoop. But my whoop criticizes my sleep just about every day. (laughs) Well, that's what you get, buddy. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, so we're talking about sleep and the importance of sleep. So if you had a a chance to make a choice, you know, sleeping in or getting up and working out, some experts say sleep. Now, just because sleep is usually the answer doesn't mean you should always discount the need for exercise for your overall health, because 
even if you exercise a little bit, it changes the brain and is critical for brain health. It's good for your body, of course. So maybe if you choose to sleep in, at least set your, your, your clock to at least a very short workout. They say at least 10 minutes to get huh. a real quick, hard workout in. Um, and that, that way you're not feeling like you've just uh, wasted the time, but it's also good to make sure that your body gets in tune. Anything else, JT, on that subject? <laughs> no, you know, maybe you can just tell your whoop to start being more grateful that you're even getting any sleep. <laughs> yeah. And they'll stop complaining to you. <laughs> it always says, as it always says uh, that's barely enough sleep. Or barely. Like that. Barely enough sleep. Anyway, then they offer their criticism. Well, anyway, it takes discipline to make sure that you do get sleep and do what is necessary to get that sleep. And, of course, as we always say, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 225. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobBrewBaker.com and listen for our answer or Vinny's answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Yes, today's barks have been brought to you by Vinny. So, uh, <laughs> by the way, killing me. I- a quick word on the power of gratitude, the book that we're talking about today and a very appropriate during this Thanksgiving time, The Power of Gratitude. Check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast and check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobBrewBaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.